talking about hypersonic missiles in the context of the Ukraine war, what the Russians are claiming, and what the reality of the weapon systems are. Uh, there are two hypersonic weapon systems, the Kinzel and the Zykron, that the Russians have been trumpeting around for about 10 years now since they were first tested. Um, in theory, the Kinzel can go Mach 6 to Mach 8. In theory, the Zykron can go Mach 7 to Mach 10. Uh, and the idea is that when weapons can achieve these sort of speeds, there's no reaction time that can be worked with. And so they, if they can hit their targets, that's it. It's over. And so everyone has been really paranoid about hypersonics getting into the system of late because the fear is it's going to obviate a whole generation of military technology in the United States and around the world. Uh, not so fast. Uh, let's start with what is happening right now. Uh, so far this year, there have been a couple of dozen hypersonics fired off in Ukraine, almost all of which have been intercepted. Uh, the Kinzels, uh, the U.S. Patriot system has shown that it can easily handle a Kinzel, and it was just in March that we got some debris. We, the Ukrainians, got some debris from some Zykrons that they shot down. It took them a while to identify them because we haven't really seen these in combat before. Uh, but the point is pre-existing weapon systems are perfectly capable of defending against these uh, new weapons. Uh, a few things you need to keep in mind when you talk about uh, hypersonics. Uh, first of all, according to the Russians, there's never been a failed test of a Zykron. So, you know, from identification to development to testing to field testing to operation, never one. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Um, there are more failures with oatmeal than what the Russians are claiming with, with supposedly their top-of-the-line missile system. That's just not true. The Russians are doing something that's called lying, but let's assume for the moment that they're telling the truth. What's the second factor? The second factor is flight weight. It sound cold. You say, well, I can hit Mark 10, but can you hit Mark 10 when it matters? It appears that when those missiles are launched or launched from a supersonic jet, that is already going Mark 2 or Mark 3. And then they have several Mark rating tracked on that above. But those things are being launched high altitude where there's hardly any atmosphere. That means that they can be tracked from a great distance away. If they are going to drop down to the surface risk radar, they hit thicker atmosphere and slow down considerably. In the case of the kindlies, we know they dropped down below Mark II, which puts them well in the range half a normal missile that costs 1 by 10 as much. And again, this is moving at a speed that a Patriot is perfectly capable of intercepting. Number 3 is accuracy and warhead. The faster you go, the more fuel you need, the smaller the warhead you are gonna carry. So the more important it is that you hit exactly what you are aiming at. As opposed to the general area, well this is a problem for hypersonic in general because for the faster missile goes, the more complex the air running across it its kit is. And it hits up to even turn into a like a little bit of like a plasma with insertion. Well, that is scrumless sensor and that is scrumless telemetry, which basically make the missile blind and deaf. And so if the target moves at all like say a ship, it's going to miss, it's going to always miss, which bring us to the fourth category, which is defenses, as maintained the petro petroid. It's in pretty well against the system in Ukraine. Even when not offered by people who have been training on the system for the last several years. But here's the th kicker. The US Patriot as good as they are. Now we are near top of the line air defense for the United States. It's just the best that we can come onto a truck. Strategic sites at US bases or longer systems that are built on to warships are more much more accurate have much greater range. In fact, can even shut down things low earth orbit, which means that if you have a supersonic that's launched from the sky as opposed to down low, we are going to see it coming afar more than a mile away. And existing systems are more than capable of taking it out. So, does this mean we don't need to worry about hypersonics? Well, let's not overplay this. It's a new weapon system and if anyone can figure out how to make it work, it will be something that adjusts the battlefield but so far, it's certainly not a game changer and so far I am absolutely not concerned about the ones that the Russians are fielding. Okay, thank you for watching Geopolitics Research.